My Dillon RL1100 is cranking out the nine millimeter and in this video, we're gonna bring it up to full tilt speed. Gavin Gay here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, I'm gonna pick up where I left off in my Dillon RL1100 nine millimeter unboxing, overview, setup, and loading ammo video. In that video, I got the press completely dialed in but we still don't have a powder check and a bullet feed setup. So in this video, we're gonna go from high speed to warp speed. Instead of pulling the handle and placing a bullet for each completed cartridge, we're just gonna be pulling the handle and that's gonna be a huge improvement. We'll also have that added safety factor of having the powder check. Powder check is absolutely critical when it comes to running a bullet feeder, especially when you don't have an empty station to do a visual powder check and visual powder checks are really more for non-bullet feeder scenarios. So in order to accomplish that, we're gonna need to free up an extra station. Depending on how you number the stations, you know, we've got in station number seven, we've got the crimp diet and station number six, we've got the bullet seeder and then station number five is open. Well, what we're gonna do is in station number five, we're gonna put the magnetic powder check die. In station number six, we're gonna put the bullet feed die and then we're gonna combine the seating and crimping operations in station number seven, which is absolutely fine. This is a high volume loading scenario. Let's get to it. The first steps are to remove the bullet seating die and the bullet crimp die. I opted to use an RCBS combo seater crimper in station number seven or station number eight if you're counting this case inserter as station number one, as I covered in the unboxing video. For the setup of this die, I put a completed nine millimeter cartridge here in station number seven, the last station. I lowered the tool head and then cranked the die in until I could feel some resistance. I had previously backed the seating plug out. I'm just working on the taper crimp at this point. When I could feel it seat down against the mouth of the case, I raised the tool head a little bit and then cranked it down about a corner turn and then back down and I could feel that resistance, just the right, right amount of crimp. You're gonna to wanna to get that right first. Then I tightened the seating plug until I could feel resistance, gave it just a little bit more to count for the compression of all the components when the bullet is being seated and then locked it down. I did make a further adjustment. I turned it in a little bit further to shorten the cartridge overall length, just slightly to match the ammunition that I had loaded previously on the press. So now we have two free stations. Now it's time to install the magnetic powder check and the bullet feed components. For the installation of the magnetic powder check die, I ran a case through all the stations, charged it, and then advanced it to the next station. This station number five, where we're gonna do our powder checking. And a little bit of a trick that I've learned is there's a band clamp on this buzzer and battery housing. And if you remove the screw for that clamp and then insert something like a quarter inch washer between the band and the body where that clamping happens, it relaxes it so that you can more freely screw the die in. So I engaged a couple threads of the die and then lowered the tool head onto the charged case and continued to screw the die body down until the disc lifted off of the housing. You'll hear the micro switch click if you're listening really carefully. The buzzer could be going on right now if you don't have the magnet at the perfect spot, which it probably won't be. Loosen the magnet clamp and then move the magnet up and down until you get into the zone where you'll hear a beep below the sweet spot and a beep above the sweet spot. You wanna be in the middle of that range. So you can handle a little bit of powder fluctuation, but you'll catch a double charge and you'll catch a squib or a no charge. And what I did to test that was I ran an empty case through, got a beep. Ran a charged case through, no beep, and then uh, an overcharge or a double charge, a beep once again. Really important to cover all of those bases. One of the advantages of this double alpha magnetic powder check die is that it only beeps when there's a problem. It doesn't beep when the press is actuated, when no cases are there, and so it's easy to set up. It's very self-contained. I really like the way that it works. So with the magnet uh, installed magnetic powder check die all configured and tested it was time to go on to the bullet feeder setup. I advanced that charged case to the next station, engaged a couple threads of the bullet feed die and then put 
about seven or eight bullets in until you can see them stacking up in this clear window here in the drop tube. Lowered the tool head and then continued to screw the die in down until the entire stack of bolts fell one bullet height and then relaxed the tool head a little bit and cranked it down another half turn or so, locked the lock nut. That's it for the bullet feed die installation. The other press had a different height for the bullet feed bowl. It was a little bit lower, so there was a shorter spring there, and I had an extra spring in my double alpha parts kit. So I cut one down. I had to take a little over an inch off of it so that when the tool head is down, you've got not really any slack, but it's not applying upward pressure on the adapter for the drop tube. That's important because if you get upward pressure, you can release bullets when you don't want to. So just a little bit of slack when the tool head is down and then looks like I could adjust this position here if I have some interference with the, uh, the cap on the powder measure there, but uh, hasn't been a problem so far. I think that's gonna work. Although, yeah, I might, I might move the entire assembly just a little bit this way. Some of these fine tuning things that you're gonna need to take a look at when you get everything set up. So I dropped the motorized bullet feed bowl here onto the case feed bowl. That's, there's a little bracket up here where it mounts and then made sure everything was connected good. Rerouted my power, routing this low voltage cable up to the bowl. Tied the cables together, made sure everything was neat and tidy. And at this point, everything is installed. We're gonna have to check for function once we get everything up and running. But uh, now we should be ready to add bolts to the bullet feed bowl add cases to the case feed bowl, and we're good to go. In preparation for loading, I ran quite a few cartridges through the press to make sure that everything was set up correctly, and I had to make a few tweaks to get everything dialed in perfectly. I adjusted the bullet feed bowl. I had previously been running the Berry's 124 grain hollow base round nose bullets in that feeder. So I adjusted the bowl angle a little bit for these 147 grain Berry's bullets. I adjusted the nose guide, the flip ramp, also, I was getting inconsistent bullet drops, so I cranked the die down another half turn or so. That completely got it running perfectly. I had a little bit too much pressure on the lifting disc on the magnetic powder check die, so I backed that off just a little bit to raise the die ever so slightly, and now that's running. Okay, to review the components, this is the same components that, and same load for that matter, that I was using in the RL1100 unboxing video. I've got Federal small pistol primers. I've got Hodgdon CFE pistol powder. I'm using these berries, 147 grain plated round nose bullets. This time I'm gonna use the Starline brand new nine millimeter brass. With this high speed setup, that's gonna ensure that everything runs as good as it possibly can. So let's take a look at our loading setup here now. This is more like it. Every time I pull the handle, I get a cartridge and I don't have to fumble with bullets, which makes me very, very happy. Well, this setup is gonna keep me busy for a while. I'm gonna be loading thousands of rounds with the Dillon RL1100 and the Mr. Bullet Feeder. This double Alpha Academy magnetic powder check. 
is the perfect compliment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Here's what I'd like to know is what do you think of this setup? Are you running an RL1100 with a bullet feeder or some similar setup? Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. I would love your feedback. Also, don't forget to subscribe with notifications because I've got a lot more RL1100 content coming up, including a caliber changeover, including primer size. I'm planning to load 308. Still waiting for the gear on that. It's been a crazy year for that, so I'm not sure exactly when. Also, down in the video description, first link is gonna be a link to an article, links to product pages, and so on and so forth. I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store, and I'm on Patreon. Any support that you could show would be most appreciated. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.